Hey everybody, uh, Bob, I don't know what to say at this point. I don't know if you're not, like you're just purposely not trying to understand my position, but I've explained this in a previous video. So I'm gonna re-explain it so everybody has this information right here. Uh, and we're gonna put this in a new thread so there's no confusion for everybody. Uh, first off, some of this decarb is as deep as five to six thou. The larger issue is because of the random nature of the decarburization, these parts have twisted and bowed all over the place in really little increments. Uh, it put me way behind trying to work through these when you kept telling me like, oh, the material's fine, it's fine, where I'm showing you this warped material. I tried, but when I got to finishing, there's still decarb all over the place. And trying to flatten these takes me 45 minutes to an hour with the bigger, thicker parts that are a bit easier. This is going to get further and further exacerbated the smaller and thinner I go. These parts are jacked up. So looking at these, the larger issue here is the warping. So to get through all the, the decarburization and all the waviness, the cupped parts, all the stuff, I've thrown away a lot of parts already that just have a long twist in them. I can't fix that. These parts are too close to being on finished size there's not enough material to just pray it all away. I know you guys want that to be the solution, but I can't put $300 worth of effort into a $200 knife just so you guys don't eat shit for this. This isn't my problem. You're not gonna scoop this back into my lap. So, the smaller parts, they're really warped and the decarburization is really random, so where these parts are heavily decarbed, or this one I guess was at the end, end of a stack, um, they're really, really fucking warped. So as you get smaller, I've got less magnetic hold down power. I need to be able to get these somewhat flat to normalize side one, get through all of that, get through all the waviness, the cupped aspect of it, the twisting as much as possible, and then flip it and bring it down and then I get it to where I can actually flatten it. On these bigger parts that are more stable, this is taking me 10 thousandths per side to get something relatively flat. They're still both. So I'm still having to put a lot more flattening time in it than this first batch, and it's moving us backward. Okay, I, I can't say that anymore plainly. This, this is not a viable solution for me to continue running my business. So call whoever you have to call, whoever's liability policy this is, this is a problem. I did my job. I'm not going to eat a yard of shit so you guys can save face. So I've been working through this. These, these thinner parts are going to be scrapped. They're, they're really bowed and they're bowed in really random ways. So you see this really heavy decarb right here? Not much there. Look at that. So because of the random nature of the decarburization, they don't want to temper flatten. They don't torch flatten as evidenced by all the work that the people at Peter's Heat Tree tried putting into these to get them flat. They're still not flat because there's not carbon in a lot of areas. So I need to get through all of that and get a normalized parallel surface and then see if I can flatten it. With these thinner parts, I don't have enough room. With the small parts, I don't have enough magnetic hold down power. They're bowed as bad as these. I mean, I, it's just really random, crazy shit. So no, they're not workable. Maybe if I just sat in a garage and had all the time in the world, I could work through all these to some extent, but I got to run a fucking business just like you guys. So yeah, this is not, while I'm doing all of this, I'm not doing the other jobs that I'm scheduled to do in the shop. I can't put months of work into this and just let everything else fall apart. So that's my position on that. Other, the other thing, all these are decarbed on the profile. They're, it's, it was exposed, so they're all decarburized. With knowing that that can be four to six thousandths deep, there is the potential for pitting and rusting in that spot. And it does, it looks terrible with a tumbled finish. It, it looks like I, I finished a rusted part. That's not what my customers ask for. We have worked with Fraser, Mitsubishi, hard mill cutting solutions. Nobody has a viable solution that is economically viable to do all of this with even just our normal cutters, let alone radius cutters. 
It's not viable. I know that's what you guys want to work, but wishing it doesn't make it so. All right, so I, I think I'm getting your position at this point, so I'm just gonna make my video and whatever. I, I don't care anymore. Have a good day. I'm so fucking mad at you guys right now that I forgot. The other thing about all of this, the heavy, heavy modifications of any of these parts, if I'm gonna get a few fistfuls of these that are viable, they're not what my customers ordered. They're, I'm making completely new shit out of it. It doesn't have the same durability standards. It's changed the performance profile. Everything is different. People didn't order that. They're not going to accept this. All right, so fucking make it right or don't, but let me know right now what the fuck you guys are prepared to do because the public needs to know, and I'm gonna let them know exactly where US steel manufacturers are on supporting small business. All right, so now, bye.